is as a toy that was released in September of 2005. It's a musical toy that allows you to use pre-recorded sound effects by interacting with different parts of the toy and it also works as a speaker. The word that you'll usually see to be described about this toy in different reviews and people just generally talking about it is that they'd often call it weird. It was made by a company called Zizzle, which was based in Bannock, Illinois, and this company's whole thing was that it made electronics and toys. It was founded in 2005 by Roger Schiffman, who is also the co-founder of Tiger Electronics, and that company is known for Furbies, Gigapets, and distributing the Poochie, and Roger is actually the designer of Furbies, Gigapets, Poochie, and Is. Roger credits his wife for the Zizzle company's name, is, is actually the very first toy that Sizzle made, and then it also went on to receive licenses to produce toys for Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, for which they made 1 to 18 scale action figures and play sets, and they also did Spongebob Squarepants and Dora the Explorer uh, licensed toys in the same style. They also made something called Rounds, which is a music mixing toy in association with a company called Big Monster Toys, and they also made Marvel Comics PVC small toys, which were called Singlers. Unfortunately, Zizzle did close in 2009. The ears has an alien-like appearance. It has two antennae ears that you can twist, and then it's got these big movable eyes, a nose that lights up, it's got three legs, which are also movable, and it allows you to make it like stand on only one leg, two legs, etc., to play around with it. And then it also has this like flicker type thing on the top of its head. It also has five different buttons on its belly, each in the north, east, southwest, and the center positions, uh, which the instruction manuals refers to as by the places on a clock, like 12, 3, 6, 9, which I thought was interesting. And you can interact with these buttons to get different desired effects. It's approximately 30 centimeters tall, and its main color options were purple and green, blue, red and yellow, and green and orange. There's also an is that I've seen that's like a chrome version, which has orange accents and its body is like a silver clear type color. And I've also found this giant display one that was posted by Obnoxious Antiques on their Facebook page. I hope someone snapped that up. It looks so cool. And Schiffman said that instead of doing market testing for the is and focus groups to then refine the product, instead he just followed his gut. So, for example, he said Iz's nose cost about $1 to make, which the company wanted to cut costs for, but Schiffman insisted, he said, we got to keep the nose, it's staying. The toy was recommended for children who were aged 5 plus, it's made of plastic, the speaker was hidden on the bottom of the ears, and it seems that the recommended retail price was about $35 to $40, and it also needed four AA batteries, which were obviously not included in the sale of the toy, which needed a Phillips head screwdriver to open. Regarding this last point, I do have two things to say as well. So firstly, four AA batteries to me seems just really wild. That seems like a lot. Like I swear that's like two Wiimotes. Like if your is is dying, you have to go get two of your Wiimotes and desperately take your batteries out and put them back into the is. And the second thing is that I actually only learned what a Phillips head screwdriver was like two years ago. I genuinely thought that it was called the star screwdriver for years and years because that's what everyone in my family calls it. And no one corrected me until I was like at a hardware store and I was like, I need the, sc the star screwdriver, please. And they just looked at me in confusion. But I also found this cool eBay listing, which shows the inner working parts of the is. Playing with the is by itself, um, there's three operation musical modes. It's play, DJ, and WZIZ FM, which I assume is pronounced like whiz, I'd assume. Play mode lets you mix effects and music. Each ear has its own audio track, and the belly has like a drum track and a tempo with the north button increasing the tempo and pitch, the south button slowing down the tempo and pitch, the east changes the volume through six different levels, uh, which notifies you when it's changing with like a ding sound. And also the center switches between the seven different beats that are already pre-programmed into the is. And then the west button flips between the play modes. If you press the center button on its tummy enough as well, a cute little thing that the is does is it actually becomes ticklish. And so it starts laughing. And then if he laughs too hard, he can actually fart. And the flicker generates sound effects as well. And then the is also has its own comments it throws out randomly or it makes like radio noise, like static type thing. 
and then in DJ mode there is changes one feature on the pre-programmed track while it's playing and if you don't like what the is is doing you can just press its belly to make it change the feature that it's changed but you can also input into the is which I assume means that if you don't select what type of change you want made it just like randomizes what it'll change and a sound is played out when the input is activated to let you know that it's on. The last mode is the Wiz FM, which makes a new track every time you want to make a change. And it also adds a noise to make it sound like you're changing a radio station to a new song. You can also turn the ears to also change to a new random track. You can also just use the ears as a speaker. So you plug in your device and you plug it into an audio jack. You can press the left side of its stomach to turn off sound effects and you can make it only play as a speaker this way. The audio will play and the ears can also just add its sound effects over the audio and during the effects the toy can move its eyes up and down and its nose can flash and light up. Jasmine France did a review back in 2005 for CNET.com on the ears and they said that the noise quality on the ears was actually much better than they expected for a toy of its liking but it was subpar compared to just like normal speakers. There's also apparently no bass that the ears offers and that when you take the cable out of the audio jack, apparently the ears would also thank you with a loud burp and jive sounding comment. This makes sense because I've seen an old product description that says you can choose beats, rhythms, and leads, specifically seven rhythms, seven beat tracks, and seven lead tracks. And then obviously you can also slow down or speed up the tempo. The reason I even remember these existed was because as so many iconic 2000s toys did, well, um, a modified version of the toy were offered with McDonald's Happy Meals. For Happy Meals in the USA, they had 18 toys to collect. The UK had six, Brazil and Mexico had four, and Australia had seven. All of the Happy Meal is is they made music and all they lit up. There were obviously ads for these toys going about as well, and you can still view the French and UK versions online. The McDonald's scissors obviously used to come in those like plastic bags that all McDonald's toys used to come in. The bags were either colored orange, blue, purple, pink, green, or red. Each bag would be numbered one to six to tell you which number you're getting in the collection. And the bags on the front would also show you how to use your ears. And then there were paper instructions inside the bag so you know how to actually use the ears as well. Apparently in the US, the Happy Meal box for Izzers was a predominantly white color and it was interactive by letting you do things like punch out like the panel's eyes on the is. And the UK version instead just kind of looks like a normal Happy Meal box, but with is photos on it. The toys were obviously then mini versions and simpler versions of the is. They only had like an off switch on their back and each different toy did something different. From Lucky Penny Shop's YouTube review, we can tell, assumedly, I assume these are the US toys, that number one is the purple bag. The is is purple with green and yellow highlights. It plays a song that when you turn the horns on, it makes sound effects. And it also has two different settings you can toggle between by pressing its belly once or twice and then three times to turn it off. Number two is the orange bag. And this is is orange with blue and pink. You press its belly and its mouth lights up. Number three is the blue bag and it has a black is with red and pink. And this is, is the one I'm 90% sure that I had back when I was little in Australia. So they must've also had it in Australia. You press its stomach and you turn its horns for sound effects. Number four's bag then is pink and the is is orange with light blue. You twist the horns to move the eyes and you can make the mouth light up. Number five has the red bag and the is is pink with blue. Its stomach can be pressed to light up the mouth and it flashes and it also makes a sound as well. You press the stomach twice for music as well. Then the final one is number six, which is the green bag, and the is is yellow with black highlights. The antenna moves, which lights up with the mouth, which is the one I'm pretty sure my younger sister had. And then I think it's smart that since McDonald's swaps the toys weekly and numbers them, one, three, and five are related to sound, or two, four, five, and six were related to light. So for kids, it's kind of like, oh, wow, it's different each week if you're getting the Happy Meal and collecting them all. So I think that was a smart approach. A comment from the user 1D Only Louis UK said that the ones in Poland that they had growing up only moved their legs and arms and they didn't light up though or make sounds. 
and then user at CEC Northern Ohio replied to say that Hungary had the same isers as the US type ones. Other McDonald's isers I've just managed to find online, but I don't know where they're from. They're just like being sold singly, uh, singularly is one that is red and yellow and it makes like a nose flashing thing. And then there's a green with a purple and yellow one with an antenna that you flick and its nose lights up. And then I've also found a blue one with a light blue highlight. Um, and that was because the user media bin 1771 says that they actually have this one. And after changing out its batteries, it plays a static noise. But once you turn the ears, it plays the McDonald's jingle. In photos, I've also seen the additional following colors. I'm just gonna list them off. It's dark green with light green, red with dark blue, gray with blue, dark blue slash purple with yellow horn, dark blue slash purple with a blue horn, purple with orange and a pink horn, blue with purple, and then black with yellow, and that one I know plays music. The is also had its own website. So on the website, it like advertised a little cartoon, which I'll get to later, but there was also video games for the is's. There was two memory matching games where you had to match the different isers um, for the first one. And then the second one was a match the audio. And there was also an additional puzzle game in which when you saw two or more of the same color blocks next to each other, you click on it and then you continuously reveal an image of an is. And then there was another two different kind of games. One was a tennis match you could play against an is. And another game was, it was just essentially a mixer to showcase the is gameplay. And it also looks like there might have been some coloring in the Is's pages. In terms of competition for the Is, unfortunately for the Is, at the same holiday season it was getting released, Hasbro re-released Furbies, which Schiffman did acknowledge would cause lots of comparisons between the two toys. And this wasn't even going to be financially beneficial to Schiffman because having Furby sold again, he wasn't really going to get any residuals from it because it's owned by Hasbro. He was just an employee who designed the toy. I also just have to mention that the channel, it's um, it's Edge, like Edgeo, it's E-D-G-O on YouTube, has made a documentary parody of Hinterland's Who's Who's, which is apparently a Canadian series of like 60 second PSAs about Canadian animals. But he's done a parody version of it with the isers. And there's also a genre I found out there of people just like destroying and throwing their isers, similar to the Oikawa and Liebert plush treatment, to be honest. Now, something that I didn't have any idea about until I started Googling and researching the isers is that in 2006, DIC Entertainment, um, who were behind things like Inspector Gadget, uh, with Zizzle, they made a cartoon. It was one of their last projects. And this cartoon was a direct-to-video cartoon called Is and the Zizzles, although some places say that it was actually released in 2007. The trailer could be viewed on Zizzle's website and two episodes were made. The first was the pilot and the second was called Will the Zizzle Sizzle or Fizzle? And I just know if I watched this in 2006, I would have ate this up. This would have been so off my alley. And then apparently a third episode called Vibration Celebration was at least planned, but it was never published anywhere and it's just counted as lost media today. So the show is about Interloper 2, who's nicknamed Is, and he meets with a family whose dad owns the Wiz FM, which is a radio station that it's just not doing well. The pilot was 45 minutes long, which I personally think is a bit of a long pilot for a cartoon, especially since they were like, oh, it's a cartoon, it's a cartoon. Like, I definitely would have considered that as a movie, as a child. But regardless, it can be viewed on YouTube on the channel Wild Brain Movies. It actually also has an IMBD page, which has about 10 reviews, giving it a 7.0 star rating overall. The reviewer stars ratings very wildly, uh, but no one seems to have left like a written review or at least none are viewable to me. A Fox review back from 2007 said the video and audio quality was actually really good back for the day on the pilot and that the DVD version of the pilot had no extras, it had closed captioning options and subtitles were available in English and Spanish. The review concludes with the final thoughts. You don't need to buy or even rent is and the Zizzles. There are many other cheaper ways to crush your child's soul. After reading this review, I was like, now I, now I need to watch this pilot. So I did, and I'm going to share this masterpiece with you. It's so bloody good. And I must note, I'm just going to present this information to you in a way that makes the most sense to me. 
because if you watch the pilot, some things are going to be a bit more out of order. They're going to like occur at different times, but that's because it's a show and it's easy to like jump it back and forth in between without it getting confusing. So let's begin. We meet a family of a mum, a dad, a daughter, and a son. They live in a place that sucks. They've moved from Manhattan, a densely populated area that makes up one of the five boroughs of New York City, and they've moved to a place that looks to be like an alien's crop circle dream. They're called the Franklin family, and it turns out they've moved to this place because despite their mum in Manhattan being a well-respected record producer that's been working for seven years to prove herself in her industry, they're now trying to let the dad live out his dream of becoming a famous DJ, and he's bought this awful radio station in the middle of nowhere to try and make that happen. The introduction solidly introduces us to the character's overall traits in a few minutes over a breakfast meal. The mum is loving and successful, but she's understandably becoming pretty frustrated with this move because she had to give it all up so that the dad could try and follow his dream. And although it's not stated, as an adult watching this film, you can kind of piece together that the mother made pretty good money and now she can't work because they're in the middle of nowhere and the dad's really, really bad radio station has no listeners, listeners and that is now their sole income. The son is the youngest child whose name is Max. He's loving, naive, and he loves his family very much. The sister, whose name we don't know yet, she's sassy. That's, that's like her only trait. I will note here too that Max's character design in particular, I personally find very confusing to me because all the other characters have like a very coherent art style, but Max has an excessively larger head and a more square head, which like the dad does have, but none of the other characters have it to the extent that he does. And he has a lot more of an obvious neck and it just seems so much more distinct than the other characters, quite off-putting. And I don't know if they chose to do this just because he's younger, so like to make it super obvious he's a child, um, but I just found it very distracting throughout the whole cartoon. And then we also learned that Max and his sister have a rock band. We then see the dad, Tim, for the first time, and like Max, as I said, he's got the square head, but again, looks really weird comparatively because Max's head is so much bigger. But anyway, Tim is... Obviously, as the owner of Wiz, he's also being the radio jockey, since he wants to be a DJ. And, yeah, we, we just learned Wiz is the name of the station, because obviously it's a Zizzle Is film. His only employee is a bored teenager who's an assistant, and we know he's meant to be a bored teenager, because his headphones are on, he's playing a game, he's wearing a hat indoors, and he has acne, so that pretty much, you know... I don't know, they try to really sell it as like the bored teenager doesn't care. He does have painted black nails as well, which I think is cool because aside from the fact that I like having my nails painted black, I feel like back in the 2000s, you did not get to see that like a lot. I, I remember, I can't remember ever seeing a boy on TV having painted nails. But anyway, his assistant character, he's very, very bored and he has a monotone voice. And then the dad, despite only one person, one person ever listening to this radio station, He's still maintaining an upbeat attitude on the radio. He's doing fun segments. He's also making jokes about how it's nice weather to watch the corn grow. He's playing a local punk band song and his only listener calls in to tell Tim that she's throwing away her radio because she'd rather listen to corn grow than punk. So clearly it's all going well. You can have the best attitude in the world and clearly it's going. We then are taken to a city where there's like a kingpin lookalike who is on the phone threatening someone and he gives us the helpful information that his name is Pinky Crushman, the owner of the biggest media network in the media world. It's a name that I can't take seriously because Pinky makes me think of Pinky in the brain and Crushman makes me think of KFC crushes. So... Think of that what you will. We learn that Crushman is very, very evil and he's buying out other businesses to continue growing his monopoly on the media market and he's doing so via unethical means like threats and extortion. And this is probably a man that I know Gozaboro Kaiba would admire. In fact, this man is so hell-bent on having a monopoly that he wants to buy out Wiz, which now has no listeners. It's going to close anyway. It seems to be running on the mum's savings, in my personal opinion. But there's no need to buy it. Like, it, it's you could just wait a few months and it'll go out of business and then the owner of the land will probably just sell it off. But anyway, he's evil, so he really wants to take it, even though the dad would probably be so desperate to get it for dirt cheap if you just really wait out a few months when they're almost going to have to declare bankruptcy. But anyway, re regardless... <laughs> We're then introduced to Junior, Crushman's son, who is like a very nerdy, scared type of character with 
the voice type that they always cast to give to like an annoying know-it-all character. Junior has been watching the Wiz station and he relays to his dad that Tim is a loser. He says Tim has been trying for months to get ratings up with no success and that the reason he's been featuring local bands is to try and to actually get their younger listeners to listen to the radio and even that's not working which is wild to me because usually anyone in like an indie local band would probably want to like hold a little listening party or something especially in the 2000s but I digress. Junior also went to the advertising agency that Tim has been using to obviously like promote on the station and Junior says that they've agreed to yank out all of their ads which means Tim now has no revenue so you know that's the power of money. We also find out that Junior, despite him being the heir to his dad's empire, is in a precarious situation because he has failed his dad before and his dad has told him you cannot mess up acquiring the Wiz station because his dad won't even then make him the head janitor. We then swap to see Iz, Interloper 2, our Zizzle is, in a plane that's caught on fire. A dramatic entrance and a very big change to the narrative. Is is a green and orange is and no hate to the art style but it's so bad for the isers because it makes them somehow look boring in my opinion like the style it's not a very vibrant kind of I guess color and I don't know I guess that makes sense but it just makes the isers look really kind of like pale and I don't know it just looks kind of odd like he's an alien I get that but it looks so odd compared to the other characters it just it keeps distracting me throughout the whole film but Anyway, I do like that he can float because he can, because it makes framing easier and body parts of his can move, like obviously the actual is can, um, because it does give him a lot of emotional range and the vibe he gives off is that of kind of just like an emotive pet. Um, essentially, they seem to have styled him after how they would a cartoon dog. There's a screen on this plane that's caught on fire that is is on and we see Dr. Zizzle on a screen who has spent seven and a half years working on and giving a piece of his soul into Iz. Standing in the room with him is Agent Graves, who's working for the American government who funded Dr. Zizzle's experiments to build Iz so that they can use him as a high quality surveillance item. Dr. Zizzle is upset about this because he doesn't want Iz to be used for bad things like that. Um, and please note that I have seen someone else refer to Dr. Zizzle as Dr. Izzle online. But I don't know if I'm just mishearing it, but I'm going to stick with Zizzle because that's what it sounds like to me every time. Agent Graves wants to hit the self-destruct device to blow up the plane because the plane is crashing and it's burning and he doesn't want Iz falling into enemy hands. He wants to destroy Iz and oh yeah, the woman piloting the plane as well, I guess. Like apparently the fire started though because of some electrical fault and randomly occurred, but she has to go down with the ship. That's non-negotiable to Agent Graves. Dr. Zizzle, though, will not allow this to happen. He doesn't even care about the woman, though. He's just referring to Iz. Dr. Zizzle manages to save Iz by ejecting him from the plane. Remotely. I don't know how that works, but he manages it. I don't know about the poor woman. I think she gets off in a parachute, so maybe they just assume she'd be fine. But, you know, I was more concerned about the woman, but, you know, it's all good. Agent Graves, though, is very not impressed with this move, and he tells his team to point to, yeah, I can't speak, to pinpoint where Iz is landing and to send out their extraction squad to retrieve him. Iz is going to land, they tell us, in a place called Peoria. I think I pronounced that wrong. Peoria? I think it's Peoria, Peoria when I looked it up, which is where the Franklin family conveniently lives. I did Google Peoria and apparently it's like an actual city in central Illinois and when I looked up the photos of it it's it's like an actual city so I found that kind of strange how they're promoting it as like just a place where corn grows. We then change scenes to where Max's band is practicing in a barn while their dog is also seen. Max is the drummer and the band is playing some kind of uh, slightly catchy song and it's not bad but it drags on for way too long. They play the whole bloody song. It's like two minutes and ten seconds which is like a whole K-pop song. And while they're waterboarding my ears with the worst lyrics I've ever heard in my life, it's obvious that the girl in the band, Max's sassy sister, whose name we still don't know, is super into the band and she's the piano player and at least for the song, she's the lead singer. We also find out in the band there's another guy and he's singing backup vocals for this song and he's the guitarist. He started absolutely going off script though and he's shredding his guitar and Max and the sister are just like looking back and forth at each other like what is going on. 
because he's drowning them out and he's ruining their sound and the sister and the guitarist boy start trying to outdo each other. They're going so hard that sparks start flying out of the speakers and the mum comes into the barn to check what's going on. We learn that the boy's name is Lucas and that he trashed all over her solo. I would also like to say I understand that Lucas is meant to be a teenager, but he looks so much older than the sister and Max, and I don't know if that's just because they gave him a little beard, but he, he just looks so much older because he's such an angular character. Like, that's, I swear, number one rule for what not to do for young characters when you want them to look young. But this, I don't know, I just thought, I was like, oh yeah, this guy's like 18, 19 probably, like just from appearance alone. And then I was thinking, oh, Max is meant to be 10, sister's meant to be like 13, 14. Um, so yeah, to me, I just felt weird because watching it, I was like, as a parent, I would not let this strange man be in a van with my kids without my supervision. Um, but I, I think, I, again, I think he's meant to be like 14, 15. He's meant to be younger um, because I think as well, they did make him a lot shorter than the adults. So, you know, but if they made him like five inches taller, I would have been like, that's a 30 year old, like, you know, so the character design in this, I do have some issues, but uh, I think that's just me being hyper picky about this. Anyway, Lucas tells the sister that she needs to chill out because he's actually the lead singer, <laughs> not her. And we learn that her name is Vera. Vera and Lucas have a fight about who's the lead, who's the rhythm, etc. But they get weirdly close for a kid's shows in the regards that the closeness sets off little alarm bells in my head because that's the type of shot that they shoot to show you that characters are going to end up together. The scene ends up with the wisdom that if you don't get your personal vibes together, you'll never get your musical vibes together from the mum. We then shift to Iz for the second time and we're jarred by the fact that Iz has a way, way, way deeper voice and robotic voice than expected. He's flying through these cornfields and a lady sees him. This woman, rightfully so, freaks out seeing a weird looking alien fly flying through her cornfields and she decides to get out her pasta strainer to wear as a helmet <laughs> to face off against this unknown alien. Meanwhile, Junior shows up to the whist station and he presents Tim with a contract and a check for the station. And turns out though, Junior is now only giving Tim half of what they had previously negotiated due to expenses. Tim tells Junior that this amount isn't enough to move the family back to Manhattan. So he's like, well, what the hell am I meant to tell my wife Paula, we found out her name is, and their kids, like this isn't enough money. We then flip back to Iz and the pasta strainer woman and she's approaching him with an electric whisk while riding her mower. And despite this woman's best attempts, Iz has literal defense systems built into him so that he can win. Is then sees the radio's stations like frequency tower thing. So he heads over there and he tries to contact his father creator. Is chooses to take, oh, I also just want to mention Zizzle is like Dr. Zizzle. He reminds me very much of Astro Boy. Like I think they were like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, we need to copy these characters designs. It gives very similar vibes. But anyway, Iz chooses to take a dig at the teenage assistant by calling him an unintelligent life form in the radio station. And then we find out that the teenage assistant character's name is Norm. Norm. Like normal. Because he's boring. I thought that was so rude. Anyway, DP deems Norm not to be a threat because he's so dumb. And Iz sneaks in to use the station's computer. And I wrote in my notes that he has an inbuilt cord he plugs into the computer. And he's looking through files for some reason because he's doing recon. I don't, I don't understand or remember why he was snooping. And Norm catches Iz, though, at the computer and Iz chooses to nom on his nose with his horn-looking mouth and whiplash Junior in the face because Junior's still at the station, using his ears while he's trying to escape. Junior pulls out Iz's cord and throws Iz off his face. Iz lands next to a computer and connects to it while playing music and downloading the entire music and sound effects library of the radio station, which are conveniently the real-life toys effects. Iz becomes live on the station and he goes viral. People are calling in all at once saying how much they love the new DJ and Tim is ecstatic. He's getting new listeners, which means then he can get more companies wanting to advertise on the station, which means he will make money. He doesn't sign Junior's contract, who threatens Tim that he's going to tell his daddy. Iz sneezes him out the door. Not only has Iz pretty much single-handedly saved Tim's station, but he's also saved Norm, it turns out because Norm was going to be shipped off to military school if he didn't have a job. Tim decides that the plan now is to sell the station to Crushman 
but at 10 times what they offered, which is enough money to allow the family to move back to Manhattan, and Tim can get a real DJ, DJ job, he says, which I assume means he's going to get to be like a disc jockey at other stations in Manhattan because of the popularity now of Wiz's station. And Paula, his wife, can go back to working in music production. During all of this celebration, we learn that something has happened to Iz, though. During all the music download and all the chaos, Iz now has amnesia and he's going to be living with the Franklin family because he doesn't know who he is. At the house, Iz flies into the barn that Max, Vera, and Lucas's band is practicing in, and he meets them. The kids at first are asking Iz, like, what he is, and in a fun marketing move, Max suggests that Iz is an MP3 player with a universal connector. So he plugs in Iz into what I believe is like an audio cube, and now Iz can play with the band, and they sing a song together. And I personally, I believe that this cartoon severely underutilized Vera's voice actress, because Vera, according to IMBD, is voiced by Yasmin Suleiman, and Yasmin is a singer, like a Broadway actress singer. And if you listen to her songs like Blue Jeans or When Will It Be Me, and then the Is cartoon, I personally don't even think she sounds like the same person singing. Interestingly then as well, Lucas's singer is listed as Dorian, I think, Chia, but like spelt C-H-E-A-H. And that name has no credits on IMBD, but there is another Dorian Chia on IMBD, but it's spelt without the second H. And this Dorian is a composer and he plays the violin. So I wonder if maybe this is actually the same person and he just like changed his name or what spelling he goes by because that doesn't seem like a common name to me. But Dorian did actually work on the music for the whole Is pilot. It is a little sad though to me if it turns out that they are actually different people because then that means that Dorian only literally has ever worked on Is and hasn't been credited on IMBD for anything else. Uh, fortunately for me though, this song was much shorter. Is becomes sad then because he doesn't know his name or who he is. But luckily on his back, there's the letter I and a scratched out two, which obviously means interloper two. Um, but it looks like a Z to the kids. So they suggest calling him to Iz. Vera suggests that Iz becomes the band's lead singer. And Lucas is not happy with this suggestion. He quits on the spot and he breaks his guitar and throws it. Vera then tells the others not to worry though. Lucas is just jealous and he'll come back. Paula, the mum, encourages Vera to then go talk to Lucas to sort through their issues. Max is talking with Iz and he says it's good to have a friend to talk to because Vera and Lucas ignore him and are all teened out. And oh no, Vera is sad because Lucas is being a jerk, but if he wasn't so cute and such a good musician, I'd tell him to beat it. Wow, could have seen that one coming. It's, it's shocking. Iz is listening to Vera talk about Lucas and I wrote in my notes that what she's saying is giving the same vibes as when you're playing Tamadachi Life and the me asks you to listen to them talk about their spouse and you watch a montage of the me like initially actually voicing dialogue about their spouse but then they're just saying blah 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 really fast because it starts short circuiting and only hearing like blah 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 because Vera is talking too much apparently for his software to handle about Lucas. We skip to the next morning then and Tim says that he's going to debut the kids band in the afternoon and the band decides on the name Is and the Zizzles. The pasta strainer alien lady from previously then makes another appearance. She's using a blender and corn rye to defend herself against what she thinks is an incoming alien invasion. The government agents show up and they introduce themselves to her by explaining that they're here because she called 911. The lady's initial reaction is relief, but then she questions if these guys are actually here because of her 911 call. Because the last time she called 911, they told her that she was a few cans short of a six pack and that if she calls them again for the ninth time, that they would send out the men in white coats to her. Regardless though, she takes the agents to the cornfield where she found Iz and this lady is awesome. She chooses to commando roll through the fields to Iz's landing location and she secured the perimeter and she gets this intense music playing during the scene. Agent Graves asks the lady if she got a positive visual ID on who desecrated our nation's corn supply. So you can tell the writers were loving this. The lady says that Iz practically sucked her face off and that Iz is lucky that she didn't finish her learn kickboxing at home course. Agent Graves then so flatly replies, Ma'am, this country needs more patriots like you. There's a march music place. And I forgot to mention this before, but the march music is a gag that happens 
every time Agent Graves talks, and I love that. It's so funny. And then all of a sudden, Lucas just rocks up because turns out this woman is Lucas's mother, and I personally just want a whole show about her. Lucas and Agent Graves then start talking, and Graves learns that Iz is going to the radio station this afternoon for the band's on-air debut. And flash forward to the station, and Lucas is 20 minutes late to the debut. It's okay, though, because he does show up, and he says he got held up, and the band starts to play their song on the air. And during the sequence, the band refers to the town as Corn Town. But, oh no, no one is calling in when Tim is prompting them to, to share how good they think the band is. And that's because Junior is back. Junior has made the power company cut the station's line, so no one's even listened to Is in the Zizzle song because Tim's electricity bill is two months overdue. And before Junior can force Tim into signing to sell over the now electricity list station for a price that is then half of the price that he initially had offered the last time, which was already half, the agents appear and capture Is and take everyone into a car except for Junior. But these agents weren't the ones we've been seeing with Agent Graves. And we find that out because Graves appears and he asks Junior what happened to everyone. And Junior says he doesn't know either what's going on. And that's because Dr. Zizzle was behind it all. He explains to the characters who Iz is and it's revealed that Lucas is a traitor. Lucas actually told Graves where Iz would be. And Lucas says, I've been stuck in this corn shucking town for 17 years. He promised that if I told him everything, he'd make me famous and I'd get out. Dr. Izzle, Zizzle, Dr. Zizzle tells Lucas that Graves lied and I too, aka Iz, is top secret and anything to do with him will never reach the media, which means making sure that no one who knows about Iz ever talks. Vera is understandably upset and tells Lucas to never talk to her again. And then on this awkward car ride, Iz says that he has an idea though to solve all of their problems. The car approaches a big city and we learn that Tim has set up a meeting with Junior at one of the city's radio stations owned by Crushman under the guise that he's going to agree to sign the contract to sell his station. Unfortunately, Dr. Zizzle's agents aren't allowed into the building by security. Tim tells Junior that if the kids' band debuts on the station's TV, then he'll sign the contract. Junior is desperate to close this deal so that his dad won't be mad and he agrees to this. The band plays another song while Dr. Zizzle's agents do manage to sneak into the building. Agent Graves also arrives and he grabs Iz and says that everyone is going to be indefinitely detained for harboring a fugitive. Dr. Zizzle pleads that Iz is harmless and his plea is actually being live broadcasted via the station so Dr. Zizzle begs the audience to speak out to save Iz. Graves' agents pull the broadcasting plug but it's too late, calls are flooding in from all over the country. Graves doesn't care, though, because he's a patriot and he doesn't care about peer pressure. He only cares, he says, about what the president wants. So Tim has the US commander-in-chief call in to tell Graves to let Iz go. Paula, during all of this, also gets a call from her old boss and he wants to sign Iz and the Zizzles for a three-record deal with Paula as their rep. And that concludes the plot. The sequel is then called Will the Zizzles... Oh, God, it's so... It's so hard to say. Will the Zizzles sizzle or fizzle... And there are only three main videos on the sequel, and one is a Romanian dub on YouTube, um, a video discussing the series, and the Romanian dub that Pasta, C-H-A-F-F-E-I-N-E, has provided English subtitles to. The synopsis provided from the wiki page says that in this episode, Is and the Zizzles, they've become a popular band now, and Tim and Paula are going with them to New York to participate in a band contest to try and get signed for a record deal, which I assume means maybe their other record deals are already up. I don't know. I don't know. But Crushman and Junior are back in the trying to take down Is and the Zizzles, probably for humiliating them. Based on the Romanian video and the subtitles, we get to meet a new blue and a red version of Is because Lucas's mum has been hired by Junior to sneak into the Franklin's hotel bedroom and scan Izz's design and mechanics so that Crushman can make Izz's for himself. And these new Izz's are introduced as in like swaddle cloths, like they're babies. And they're in, incubu in incubators like babies are in the hospital too. And they can cry like babies. And then during the episode, Izz and these two new Izz's, they do get to perform a song together. And Lucas's design did, thank God, get an update. And then... A mention of the sequel I found online in the YouTube comments 
was a commenter stating com, commenter commenter commentator why do i think i'm saying commentator i'm saying commenter they said that they remembered the sequel airing in australia on kids co in about 2010 or 2011 they said they found it just like flipping through the channels and they watched a bit of it and kids co though um did shut down in 2014 so it obviously just like won't one day reappear on the Australian air as a rerun. But that is good news because apparently that means that it maybe is actually out there just like in an archive somewhere. And with that, that concludes the video on Zizzles Izzles. My God, why all the Izzles? On the Zizzle Is Toys. Please let me know about any experiences you had with these toys. Like I'd love to hear about them. Like if you had a rare colored one, which can't be found online nowadays, maybe if you still have one. Or maybe if you were one of like the magical people who actually got to watch this cartoon on TV, I'd love to hear all about them. Thank you. Bye.